Okay, Joyce, here we go. Here's a five-minute demonstration. First, let me tell you what I have here so you know what I'm doing. This paper right there, there is this. It's just a 50-pound sketch paper. No big deal. It's a 50-pound sketch paper. I have a little tiny booklet that I made of, I think some of it's watercolor paper, and some of it just might be heavy paper, like 140-pound press type thing. So... Um, and I'm not a purist. I'm not, you know, like this is a really simple watercolor sketch right here on this heavy paper, which is probably a watercolor paper because of the grain. And um, I just, you know, layer the paint. I just kind of just started doing it. I usually work wet on dry. I don't typically work wet on wet only because it's a lot harder to control it because you wind up with a very fast, what we call a fast surface. So the easiest thing to do is just to take and just draw, let's say you want to do a flower head or a bunch of flower heads. I know this is horrible drawing, that's okay. In, in watercolor painting, believe it or not, less is more, okay? You just don't want to really, you don't want to really do a whole lot of heavy duty drawing because the drawing marks can wind up becoming a real problem. So if I just do, you know, and then I'll do kind of a vase shape down here. Very, very simple. Maybe a little tabletop. Yeah, try doing this and photographing at the same time. Not fun. Give it a little bit of pattern. Now, like I said, this is a, a sketch color paper. So I have some watercolors in a little ceramic doohickey there. I have some water right here, which I'm going to use my water brush, but I'm still going to use water... And then I always just take a bunch of paper towels, fold it over, and um, and I just kind of blot as I go along. So it winds up getting soaking wet, but I don't really care. And then you just, you know, take your colors. Now here's the one thing you do not do ever. You don't go... If you're going to do wet and wet, then you do your surface wet first, but it's really harder to control that way, and it's better to do it. Dip your brush in the water, dip your brush in the paint, like this, and then go directly to your surface and lay the paint in. You see, I can control where I put it. Now, because you're an opaque painter, I'm not going to do it solid blue. Now, I can, I can rinse it out, blot it, and then if I want to, say, soften an edge, I can go in like this. Now, I'm just mainly working with whatever residual water I might have had in the brush. So I get a nicely modulated little wash in there, okay? I can always go back over it with more water and more paint. What you don't do is go back and forth, water, paint, water. You don't go water, paint, water, paper. You go water, paint, paper. Water, paint, paper. Water, paint, paper. If I want to lift a color, it's water, dab, paper. Okay, so that's kind of like the, the best and easiest way to not have a big mess when you paint with watercolors. So if I go water, I'm going to pick up some pink here, do a flower. I guess my pink was dirty because it's giving me a dirty color. So now it's very watery, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to rinse off my brush. Dab it on my thingy here. I'm going to go back in and suck up some of this water. All I do is just kind of roll the brush, rinse it, back over here, dab it off, go back over here. Sorry, I'm on a tether right now because I'm my phone is plugged in. I'm going to try and get some more color. So I'm actually just going to, because it's already wet and this is a really thin paper, I don't want to keep adding water. There, that's a better color. It's a deeper color. And you don't have to respect, then you go back, tamp it out, clean off your brush, um, and then you just keep on going that same way. Now if I wanted to do a background around my wet flower, um, let's say I decided I wanted to do uh, I don't know, a green background. I've got some green here in the middle. It's a various colors of green. I just kind of threw a bunch of them together. I'm going to have to soften it up a little bit. 
some of it's viridian, so I'm just going to go with the viridian, which I know is a very hideously dark color. But I could lay it in like this. I cannot touch the red because if I do touch it, what will happen is they'll both bleed together. See, like that. So you want to leave some space if I'm going to do a background around objects. And when you're out sketching, that's generally what happens. Just I'm just being honest here. Most people don't, you know, do elaborate painting procedures when they're outside or, you know, when they're in a cafe or something. They just kind of go with the flow. So, you know, I just keep going. Um, are you going to get some uh, weirdness? Yes, because, again, this is not a watercolor paper. You can see it's not taped down. It's moving around on me. It's not in a tablet or anything. So, But you get the idea. I mean, that's... That's kind of what you you deal with, especially when you're out and you're not in a studio and you're in an an uncontrolled painting environment. You wanna you wanna reserve white space around your objects so that you you don't have things mixing it up too much, unless that's what you want. And always back to this, clean off your brush, really good. Um, I mean, I, I do like using the water in the reservoir, but I will tell you that the water, if you just use the water in the reservoir, it gets dirty really fast and takes and it becomes like a dirty gray. And then you're using dirty gray water. So now, of course, if you're working, like I said, that's just crap, you know, 50 pound sketch paper, which is really not meant for water. But if you're working with um, regular watercolor paper, a lot of times I don't even bother with drawing. I just go right to, let's say I want to do a wash. I'm picking up my blue. I just, and I always press right down. Use your whole brush. You just work it out. You work out the paint because it melts or goes together on its own, especially like say I'm doing a, um, sky. So I'm literally pressing it all the way down the ferrule and you let it just sit and do its thing. Then back to the water, clean your brush, back to your thing, your scrubby thing and just kind of damp it off. And now I see you can see the sheen that that's wet. It'll dry really quick but you can see it's not uniformly dry because the brush, um, it's a synthetic brush, it doesn't evenly hold water. Only uh, sables evenly hold water, but um, so there's there's a certain amount of you know wetness and dryness, and you have to let it be while while that part's going on, and then you just go on and do your next layer. I mean, I might decide I want to have a layer of green, so water, pick up my paint. Now remember, this kind of paper is pretty absorbent, so I'm gonna do a, a shape of you know like a hills and valleys or whatever. So I'm going to go back, wash off my brush. Once I've done my, my area, I need to leave it alone. Uh, let's say I go back and I want to put some, um, this is kind of like a raw sienna, I think it might be a golden quinacridone too mixture. I think there's some golden quinacridone. Now if I let that touch, or if I go into it, that's going to bleed. And sometimes that's, that's a really cool effect, you know. I might want to leave it that way. Back to the water, wash off my brush, damp it off. Go back in, pick up more water. And I think I'm going to pick up some... Yeah, I think this is like a Prussian blue or like a phthalo blue. It's really deep, deep staining blue, which is kind of fun. Now, this is semi-dry, okay, but I'm just going to put... Put a an area in, maybe wash it out or work it out a little bit for like a lake. Clean off my brush, clean it off again, go back, pick up more water, and and I want this to be kind of maybe a pink flowery area. That's a little bit much. Wash off my brush, damp it off. Wash off my brush, damp it off. See that was that's called lifting. And 
and just kind of press and lift. So that's my watercolor lesson in a five minute or less nutshell, but it was like, I don't know how long it is. Okay, bye.